My video today is going to be showing you all how to make a flatlined corset, or at least the seams on one. So the piece I'm going to be using is this one, which I was showing you guys yesterday. Essentially it's one layer of cotil and then a layer of fashion fabric which has been interlined so it's nice and strong. Um, the fashion fabric is then sewn to the cotil so I can then treat it like a single layer cotil corset. Before I start showing you that, I'm actually going to run a competition because I basically want to get the word out about my blog and getting a lot more viewers now and I'm really enjoying making it but it would be good if I could spread the word a bit more because basically I want to get more feedback and see what people like and what they don't like. So it's actually got a prize which is going to be this, it's a card from the Symington collection so it's got the envelope and everything, it's not been used and it's got some really gorgeous pictures of corsets on it. I'm really lucky in that I live really close to the Symington collection so if people actually participate in this and like the prizes I can get lots of things like this for you guys which are nice and corset related. What you have to do to enter is to link to my blog on either a blog or Facebook or anything like that and then leave a comment on the post which this video is on telling me that you've done that. It's going to run for a week and after that I'll pick a winner at random and let you know and then I can get the card in the post to you. On to the tutorial, like I said, this is the corset I showed you all yesterday. So the fabric is the one that's been interlined. It's then been sewn to the cotille using a long stitch so that it's basically like one layer of fabric. Show you in the light so it's a bit better. It's got a black stitch so it's not going to show up too much if I manage to get a couple of stuck and not be able to pick them out. Showing you how it's going to look when it's finished. I'm using external burning channels just because I like the aesthetics of it on this corset. I think it will break it up nicely. And on the inside, really is nice and neat. For those of you that like neat looking corsets, which I know I do. The way it works, to get it neat on the inside, you actually pin it so that the cotille or the lining is touching, so it would be um, wrong sides together rather than right sides together, which is what you would normally do when you were sewing. So I've already pinned this down here and I will just run a short stitch. I'm using a 2.5, this is a Husqvarna Viking Platinum 755, but um, obviously if you're not using a Husqvarna or a, a similar machine then just w whichever is a short stitch that you like working with really. I'm using just a standard presser foot as well, I'm not using a zipper foot or anything. This is just very quick to show you guys, so it's not going to be massively accurate. about having sewn the fashion fabric to the cotille is that the line I've done that with the um, long stitch basically just shows me where I stitch on the um, two together so it can be a bit quicker it's not massively accurate but that's now together so that's the whole corset hasn't got the boning channels on or anything yet but it's pretty much ready to go showing you on this one the next step you need to trim this down so get your fabric scissors, obviously I've already done it on this one and just trim along. That is basically, a, a, I'd say about a quarter of an inch if that. Basically wide enough that you can sew down it and it's not going to fray and end up pulling the seams apart. You need to open it out. Decide whether or not you want them to face the back of the corset or the front. For so I don't know why I always go towards the back, I just prefer that. Put it under the corset, uh, under the presser foot. Again, I'm not using a zipper foot. Some people may find that a bit easier, but I really don't think it's necessary because this is going to be covered anyway. 
changing it now to a long stitch. This is the longest my machine does because it's really going to be covered up anyway by the burning channels down the seams on this. Make sure you pull it because if you don't, you're going to end up with like a pocket underneath where it's sewn and really messes up and you're going to have to do it all again. So pull it apart. Like if you were going to press it, you would normally sort of put it like this, make sure it was pulled apart. You're doing that but just to one side. And make sure you do it the same on both halves of the corset. If you really want to avoid getting wrinkles, then don't only pick like front to back in terms of the way you're folding it, but pick a direction in which you're sewing. So always go from like the top to the bottom in the burning channels, which is a pain on one half of the corset, but it really does make a difference, believe it or not. This is a bit fiddly, but it is kind of worth it, I think. It makes for a really neat corset. Hopefully you're understanding this, I'm not making much sense. Obviously this method only works if you are doing external boning channels. If you're doing internal ones, you can do it with the um, right sides together rather than the wrong sides, like the first step I showed, so that this, is, this would be like on the inside. That's now flat down. The next step, you want your boning tape. You can either make your own, use Catil because otherwise the spirals will kind of poke through and you really don't want that happening. Put them so the middle goes over. Pin it and sew it, and then that's how you basically your external boning channels go. With these ones, which are um, the ones you can buy, they have like a. If you get a pin. Basically, they're hollow, so you can you can put the bone. Don't know if you can see that it's got a pin down it now. To open it out. So you can put the bone down there, so that's really nifty, it just saves a lot of time and effort but it costs a bit more than if you're just making them on the bias yourself and they can only be bought in two widths. So when you've done that, if I show you the inside again in the light, you end up with a corset that is really nice and neat on the inside. You might notice the busk is kind of letting it down in terms of how neat it is. I've got a demo. It was one of the first ones I did on this website for how to put a busk in this way because it's using, if you have a look, the buttonhole stitch at the busk. Because I find that if you're doing it the way where you're using a facing, it looks really great on the inside and really neat, but when you actually lace the corset on, no matter how many times I go over the stitches, no matter what stitch length I use, I find that eventually the busk will start to pull through. And while it may not kind of break straight away, it does end up really not looking very pleasant, especially if you're using like a, a standard bus so the white is showing through on a corset like this. That's now the fashion layer, uh, well the whole of it really because it's in one thing, put together. I will do another one when my boning casing arrives because that was sort of the last of it I've done down there, showing you how to put those on if anybody wants to see that. But it's really just a quick video to show you a way of doing that so that you end up with really nice, neat insides to the corset. There's no waste tape on this. I actually rarely use one because I haven't felt it really to be necessary, but I think that would be the downfall for this, is that it would have quite a visible waste tape if you were to use one. Just a reminder, if you do want to take part in my competition, share a link to my blog and then leave a comment on the post for this and hopefully this was actually of use to somebody.